Joe, let's start here because there's obviously every single day there's more news about this Michigan sign-stealing scandal. I love saying that every time, sign-stealing scandal. Today, the AP came out and said that they had talked with a former employee, I will, or a former Big Ten employee. I'll let you give that quote in just a minute. But my thing is this. How do you – should the Big Ten take action? Not, 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 not let me say how, how can you. Should the Big Ten take action? Because apparently there was a meeting with other ADs and coaches around the league, and they wanted them and Tony Petiti to take action. But Tony Petiti, like we talked about in the non-playing portion of the year, he's a TV guy. He's not a rules guy. He's not a football guy. He's a numbers guy. He's a money guy. I, they sent Michigan – a letter of allegations today on they should do disciplinary action and they have until Wednesday to respond. Well, what? why didn't you just tell Michigan what they should do? Why are you going to leave it up to Michigan? And then if Michigan does anything, it's a sign of guilt. Why would you do that? There is also in line with all the the terrible things that are happening here in this whole situation, it's also going to be mishandled no matter what. It is such a difficult situation to deal with. And uh, Elks is pointing this out, a really good point. I actually would argue that Tony Petiti is probably the best guy to handle this way more than than Kevin Warren, who was terrible at his job because he was a, he was previously a lawyer. He went to Harvard law school. He was a lawyer for a period of time before he got into broadcasting. So he's going to probably have the best understanding of how to evaluate the situation and do it properly or do it in the best possible outcome. I will say, though, that it's likely that this is going to be slow, though. It's going to be a slow, drawn-out process. I really think that because there is so much information, this is such an elaborate, complex situation, you cannot levy a suspension. You cannot suspend suspend Jim Harbaugh. You cannot go as far to remove them from the college football playoff race. You can't do any of those things without allowing a full investigation to play out. Because there's just too much information to know exactly what occurred, the severity of everything. There are too many accusations that are out there right now. There's just too many. And it would be, I know this sounds insane to say, it would be unfair to rush to that. I understand that the actions of cheating are unfair, but it would be unfair to rush to some sort of conclusion without having finishing that that investigation. Because then they're going to get sued, like you've said. Well, I will concede this. If you're unable to prove that, then it is killer for Michigan. Yeah. Right? Like, if if you take action and it's proven that they were not guilty or that they would have been able to continue to play in the playoff or they would have been able to continue the season, you you know, like, a lot of people said Art Browse had knowledge of his situation. The NCAA, lawmakers, everybody, you know, came to the conclusion that he didn't. You have you have no idea how this will and will not go in reference to Harbaugh and the players. But Joe, the problem on the opposite side of that is we got a coach on the sideline, okay, of Central Michigan getting signs and what looks to appear, what some people have said, he's got on sunglasses at night with maybe a camera in there. I I, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. Central Michigan has opened an investigation. The NCAA now has joined that investigation. If that was one of their staff members, then why were they open an investigation to start off with? Uh, Jim McElwain didn't open up an investigation, right? Like, he he wasn't doing that. Connor Stallions is on the sidelines. So the problem is, if you're Michigan State saying, hello, Hello, just because the, we had to fire our head coach over what may or may not have happened with a woman who's cried wolf twice in her life, document show, Mel Tucker might get paid here. We literally, literally have a dude on the sidelines. They cheated. Like, if you're Michigan State, how can you sit there and say, if that's Connor Stallions, how do you not take action? He got fired, that's it? Like, you you are coming down on us, giving us pressure about an allegation 
that we knew of, okay, about two parties that consented it allegedly. So I just sit here and say, how, how do you have that guy on the sideline? How do you have the Venmo? How do you have people corroborating and saying, hey, man, I used to be there. Hell yeah, Stallions was paying people. Look, I continue to say this, and this is not a take that seemingly a lot of people like to, to come to grips with. But the action of stealing information from other teams is widespread amongst the 130 college football teams, all the Power 5 teams. It is widespread. And we now have the AP published an article today. I'm going to quickly read this quote that's in the article. Okay. A former employee at a Big Ten football program said Monday it was his job to steal signs and was given details from multiple league schools to compile a spreadsheet of play-calling signals used by Michigan last year. The employee said he recently shared the documents which showed the Wolverine signs and corresponding plays, as well as screenshots of text message exchanges with staffers at other Big Ten schools with Michigan. And he, he remains anonymous because he, does, he doesn't want that to impact his, his career just, justifiably. I have been saying this throughout this entire process, that they are not, they are not the sole school that has put together an operation this complex. There are other schools in the country that are either doing something similar or doing something different and equally as egregious when it comes to stealing information, stealing plays, stealing signs. They are just the only school that has been stupid enough to get caught because Connor Stallions did a horrible job of covering his tracks. He didn't even attempt to because I think he didn't think he was going to get caught. There's a reason why nobody has been outspoken about this why no one has said anything about this, because it is clearly something that is occurring within the conference and across college football. I think that they're trying to be made an example of, and I think that it is bullshit for all these other programs to come to the table and accuse them of doing something so wrong and egregious when they're likely in right. cahoots with other programs that are doing similar Pause. things. Pause. You can't take that our, our article from the AP who has had issues in the past, okay, of malpractice and missourcing on things. Just stay with me. Okay. When you literally had the Wall Street Journal a week ago saying that Michigan rescinded a contract, Michigan actually comes out and says, that's horseshit. So, yes, I get what you're saying, that if this is true, I think this is what you're trying to say. If that is true, shame on the other Big Ten schools for doing that when you're blaming Michigan for doing it. And, uh, I and want right, like that's what you're yes. trying to say. I want to, and I actually want to would like to add this as well. I think that the real appropriate course of action here is expediting the implementation of headsets and helmets. It has to be widespread in college football by sometime early next season. It you needs know, to be expedited. Every SEC coach of that, by the way, on the SEC. They're all going to say no. They're all going to no, say no. All of them it. said yes. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised by that. Yes, Saban said yes. Kelly said yes. Pittman said yes. And I think Kiffin said yes. I wasn't on there with Jimbo, but I, I, I literally was falling asleep when he came to the microphone. Or the they need, phone. they need to implement this because the minute that it's implemented, this whole thing is is. The, it's defunct. It, it, it's it's no longer it, it's no longer an issue. We, we we're the not problem, talking about it anymore. The problem with that is teams are still going to bring in signs because they want to run hurry up. They're still going to have signs on the sideline. That's true. Well, okay. if it's hurry up, you're not going to be able to really steal a play in a hurry up situation. We'll 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 get to Elks's super chat in just a minute. And if you want to send super chats, you're more than yes, welcome. Yes, those to are those chat. are now turned on after a long battle with, with the YouTube, partner. Yeah. Pro yeah, we, we got that figured out. Yeah. All right. But the truth is, Joe, the problem that you have here and why Tony Bettini, who you said might be the right guy for the job, he number one, he did not give them any disciplinary action. He didn't say he didn't come out and say, hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z. What he said was, hey, you should take disciplinary action. Basically, if 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 they do anything with Harbaugh, they are admitting guilt. But I had Connor Stallions on the sideline. Nobody has provided proof to me that Ohio State was doing it. Iowa was doing it. Nebraska was doing it. Penn State was doing it. I don't have that evidence. 
So just some back door, back room, dudes drinking at a bar saying that other schools were doing it does not give me the evidence that they were doing it. One AP poll or one AP report does not give me Connor Stallions on the sidelines. It doesn't give me laminated head, uh, a laminated sheet with head signals on them. Like it doesn't. So uh, okay. we can blame on. Can you give me any evidence for any other school other than a, a stupid little AP article? No, no one else has gotten caught. No one else has been dumb enough to okay. get caught. Now everyone's going to cover their tracks as and, and cease operations until this thing is is completely resolved. Oh, no. Absolutely they are. All right. Yeah. Before we move on to the game, let's get to Elks' super chat here. He says, Joe, that's cool. They didn't rec uh, record future opponents. No one else is doing this. The fact you have zero no or zero clue what's going on, it's hilarious. Thank yeah. you for the super chat. Okay, first of all, I've read up on this. I'm not like going off of no information. Um, I, I don't. There's obviously no evidence of these other programs doing this, and it ties into my point that Michigan is the one who's being made the example of. Everybody is frustrated with Michigan's whatever reason that they're going after them. I don't know what the reasoning is. I'm not going to put together a conspiracy theory here, here of why they're doing it. I don't know. But they are clearly, there clearly is some sort of vendetta over the past year with all the different allegations that have come out against Michigan. Same thing happens with Georgia when they succeed. Allegations and, and things are thrown around about Georgia's football program. When teams are successful, this stuff happens. No one's going to bring to the table that Illinois is stealing signs. I'm not saying that they were because no one cares. They have a mediocre record. And they've had a mediocre record over the past couple of years. You're only going to care when you're losing as significantly as you are. And that's why everyone's going after Michigan. I don't think cheating is a vendetta. Wait, what do you mean by that? I don't think that Michigan being caught cheating has other schools being making it a vendetta. But everyone else is doing it. That's what I'm saying. There's no one's been of what? You have no evidence of that. Zero. You're right. I don't. I don't. I don't have any evidence of that. I have an article right now, and I just – secondhand stories from people who've worked in college football that I've talked to. That's all I have. I don't have enough. I don't have enough evidence. All right. 